Please welcome Tor Lerdal and John Miners. Good evening. My name is uh, Tor Lerdal. I'm the CEO of Lerdal Medical, a Norwegian-based education company operating principally in high-income countries. I'm also the chairman of Lerdal Global Health, a not-for-profit company founded for the sole purpose of helping save lives at birth in low-income countries. It's my privilege to present on behalf of both companies, but even more on behalf of a number of implementation partners, a series of educational programs that we believe may help save 20,000 more lives in 2018. For over 12 years, in high-income countries, Lerdal has partnered with the American Heart Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics in developing and implementing adult pediatric and newborn life support programs. These programs, or national derivatives thereof, are now in use in most high-income countries, reaching an estimated 8 to 10 million healthcare professionals and medical students every year in about 10,000 hospitals. Use of scenario-based patient simulation in small groups and to a growing degree, low-dose high-frequency refresher training have been shown to increase the efficiency of these programs. In 2018, Lerdal will also be helping the U.S. National League of Nursing to further scale up their simulation and education solutions for nursing and accelerate to practice programs. Since 2010, in low-income countries, Lerdal has partnered with USAID, Save the Children, Japigo, and the American Academy of Pediatrics and others to develop and deliver the Helping Babies Survive and Helping Mothers Survive programs. These were actually launched by Hillary Clinton at the Global Health Summit in 2000, uh, 2012. These programs address the causes of over 75% of newborn and maternal deaths. Studies from four countries show that when well implemented, these programs can reduce mortality at birth by as much as 50%. Over 500,000 birth attendants in 80 low-income countries have now been trained in these programs, including birth attendants in an estimated 5,000 hospitals. Most recently, we have become the global impact partner of the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists for introducing and scaling up the SAFE program for safer anesthesia in low resource countries, also using simulation-based team training. Lerdal and our partners believe that by implementation of these programs, on average, it is fair to assume that each of the 10,000 hospitals in high-income countries will save at least one additional life per year. And each of the 5,000 hospitals in low-income countries will save two additional lives per year, resulting in a total of 20,000 more lives being saved in 2018. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you John Miners, Chief of Mission Aligned Businesses from the American Heart Association, who will be discussing our partnership around the development and implementation of the Resuscitation Quality Insurance Program. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tor, and, and uh, uh, it's really tough to follow Bill Clinton and Tor Lairdahl. Um, <laughs> But my name is John Miners, and I'm Chief of Mission Aligned Businesses with the American Heart Association. It's my honor to be here today amongst this distinguished group of fellow uh, healthcare colleagues dedicated to increasing patient safety. I'm thankful to Tor Lerdahl 
uh, for being here with me as Lairdahl is a strategic partner in our commitment. Poor quality CPR is a preventable harm. And timely delivery of high quality CPR is the greatest determinant of survival from cardiac arrest. Unfortunately, even with trained professionals, poor quality CPR is common. The American Heart Association guidelines on emergency cardiovascular care address the need for alternative training models to develop highly skilled healthcare professionals able to consistently provide high quality CPR during a cardiac arrest. We're seeking nothing less than a paradigm shift in hospital resuscitation practice. Advances in technology and evidence now show that low dose, high frequency psychomotor skills training is effective at increasing and maintaining CPR competency, and that resuscitation quality improvement initiatives are both necessary and effective at saving lives of cardiac arrest patients in the hospital. This shift from a traditional compliance mindset to a resuscitation skills competency approach centered on patient safety will create a new standard of care and organization-wide resuscitation quality improvement programs. Developed through our strategic relationship with Lairdahl and launched in February of 2015, the Resuscitation Quality Improvement Program, or RQI, is uh, developed high quality, quality resuscitation quality through low dose, high frequency CPR skills practice and high fidelity CPR coaching. Validated by early evidence on actual patient care and survival, lives are being saved. Since introduction, approximately 300 hospitals in the United States have adopted RQI and enrolling in improving the competency of more than 300,000 healthcare providers. The HA is committed to saving 50,000 additional lives each year on adoption of RQI in the 5,500 US hospitals and 15 million healthcare providers who currently use our training solutions. Where you live or die should not determine if you survive, but it does. The overall odds of surviving a cardiac arrest in the United States varies by as much as 42% between hospitals. When adjusted for admissions and incidents, we believe that full hospital adoption of the RQI program will result in dramatically improved equity of outcomes across organizations. We're committed to the rapid growth and adoption of the RQI program with 500 U.S. hospitals that will be implemented by the end of 2018, and a goal of 500 additional hospitals each year moving forward. We believe by, this, by the end of this year, the RQI bundle of care has life-saving potential with an additional 5,000 lives saved. Together, <laughs> together we can and will save and extend the lives of more in-hospital cardiac arrest patients. Thank you.